Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. I'm James and you're watching Blue Dog Aquatics. All right guys, today we're doing something special. Uh, if you're new to this channel, welcome. Uh, if you're a subscriber, welcome back. Uh, we bring new and exciting videos of different reptiles and uh, aquatic life each and every week, uh, Monday and Friday. Uh, but today we're doing something special, something I've wanted for a long, long time, and that is the Halloween crab. My favorite time of year is Halloween. I dress up each and every year. We do a big cookout. Uh, I make deer chili. Uh, from deer that I've actually hunted and uh, we just have a big gathering of friends and family and it's an awesome time but I don't know I, I can't even imagine like life without Halloween because it it lets you be your weirder former self and I think that's where Halloween crabs come in on this because Halloween crabs look like they're dressed up and they're going to a Halloween party because their colors they have the purples the oranges and the blacks and so they're just suited up in style and ready to go now what we're doing today is we're showing you we got two of them at a reptile expo yesterday i've been wanting them for a long time we got a boy and a girl um they'll be going in different setups but uh for now we're uh, putting the female in uh behind me up here we actually have a 20 long four um it's a terrarium now a big thing with these guys is they're a little escape artists so you want to make sure that every corner, every edge, every seam is nicely tight fit. Ideally for one, uh, one Halloween crab, you want about a 20 gallon long. Uh, that's ideal. They love to dig. They love to get deep in the soil. They're not like other crabs that you see in like salt water that will go out and they're, they're fully submerged. No, Halloween crabs, they actually can't swim. So... <laughs> and the really cool thing about them is that they drink fresh water but they bathe in salt water and so you actually have to have two different water dishes in their setup so that they have a spot to bathe and a spot to drink now with that too you also need some rocks or some clay pots in there so that they don't drown it cannot be it has to be very either a very shallow dish or something that they can climb on and around and uh, yeah it's it's pretty awesome but we'll click to it and uh, we'll show you what we got and what we're gonna set up and we're gonna add in some things so stay tuned all right guys uh, this is one of the setups uh, that we will have for the uh, one of the Halloween crabs we got glass front doors with a locking pin there um, right now we have a little bit of substrate in here we're gonna add much much more now these guys are nocturnal so they don't need lights but they need forms of heat um you can give them uvb it's not i've read a lot on these guys and there, there's no scientific fact that they need uvb but for me um, these guys do need calcium and uh with their exoskeleton that they molt um, I think it would just be beneficial to have a UVB so that's what we have up here we have a UVB mixed with uh, a heat lamp um, they do you can't see it but there is a heat pad underneath um, the heat pad should only be two-thirds of the enclosure and so well that I guess that'd be half so well yeah it's a little over two-thirds but you want a spot where they they can be warm throughout the entire bottom of the enclosure because they're going to be burrowing down in. But you also want a spot over here where it's going to be cool if they get too hot. You don't want to overheat them. Uh, the insane part about these guys is they need a lot of humidity. The humidity on these guys is 80 to 90 percent. Um, you can achieve that by misting uh, twice a day, once in the morning, once at night. Now. Real quick before we get into it, I'll kind of show you what we're going to put in here for the girl. Um, we have lots of peat moss. Um, this is actually the substrate. What we did is we did a desert blend mixed with eco earth and we gave it more of that wood chip feeling. There's more uh, consistency. Now, how you know, right now it's pretty dry. Uh, we put a little bit of moisture in there, but we'll add a lot more. 
but how you want to know that you have the perfect setup for them is you should be able to stick a pencil in or a finger in and when you take your finger out it should uh, not cave in like it just caved in and that's because this is brand new and it's really dry but <coughs> sorry also what you need is these guys love to climb they love to move around uh, being nocturnal they're moving around all throughout the night and so they need leaf litter uh, they need branches they need rocks uh, this is gonna be one of the water dishes um, for fresh water and you see how I have a lot of rocks in here so that even though it's I mean it's it's not terribly deep but I don't want to get it too deep where they can still get in and drink um, now we did talk about how they do need salt water so this dish once I get all the leaf litter and everything out of it will be the salt water dish we have a couple more pieces of uh, almond leaves up here and then a couple more branches just to throw in there we're gonna break these pots up into smaller areas uh, give them places to hide now Halloween crabs like to go through and when, when they're burrowed and that's the thing if you're gonna have these guys as a pet you're not going to see them a whole lot unless you're out here at night and you have a red light over the top of them because they're going to be burrowed away in their hides a lot and that's mostly because it's moist for them and uh, it's a place for them to get out of the weather you know these guys burrows out in the wild is insane they can be anywhere from six inches to five feet in depth now obviously you, we're not going to do a five foot in depth one because that would just be unreal but what we're going to do is we're actually going to build up the back up here now these guys do need ventilation so that's why we have the screen top up here but we're going to build the back up up here so that they can dig little burrows and everything throughout here if you do have two Halloween crabs in the same enclosure um, it, I'd recommend putting them in a 40 um, males are very very aggressive uh, don't get me wrong females can have attitude um, there's no guarantee that you're gonna get a calm female now ideally when you have a bigger setup like let's say a 40 um, it's good to have like a male and a female or a male and two females but you never want to have two males because they're literally gonna get there and they're gonna shred each other apart and they're gonna kill each other and that's just not good um, how you can tell the difference between a male and a female is a male is going to be a lot brighter in his colors Whereas a female is going to be duller uh, The female is going to have kind of duller orange legs on her uh, Whereas the red or the male is going to be more vibrant um, Food sources these guys need calcium like anybody else um, They need a wide variety and these guys can actually be finicky eaters because You have to constantly change uh, what they're eating uh, for me personally, you know the research that I've done on them if uh, Like let's say chameleons, you know, I have chameleons that they go on a, a cycle of about two to three different animals that they eat Which would be crickets dubious and superworms superworms for the protein now uh, Halloween crabs are omnivores, but they still need that little bit of protein um, it's recommended that on the omnivore side of it it's about 90 percent and then the protein side is about 10 percent a good form of that where you can get calcium in that is you can use uh, broccoli or greens and fruits um, you can dust them if you want to uh, but there's also a lot of uh, greens out there that have the calcium in them cuttlefish bones are pure calcium and so they can sit if you're not feeding them enough calcium or you're not dusting it enough they can go over and they can chew and pinch on the, uh, the cuttlefish bone and they can actually get that form of calcium that way now owning these guys these guys are not something that like to be held they don't like to be touched they don't even like to be messed with um, there are some people out there that have them but if you take them out to go hey you know here it is this is what I have you only want to have them out for a very short period of time and more than likely you're gonna get pinched um, the biggest thing with them is you do not want to have that reaction that every, most everybody has is when we get pinched or startled we fling our hand well you fling your hand and you're gonna throw 
that crab and you injure it and we, we just don't want that. So if you plan on holding them for short increments, and I wouldn't say any more than five minutes at a time and because you're just gonna stress them out. And while we're on that note too, if you're gonna show them to somebody and pull them out, don't do it when they're down in their burrows because if you dig up their burrows, go, oh, look at him, you are just gonna stress that Halloween crab out so much. So if they're out and about at night and you're like, hey, check them out real quick, that's one thing. But back on the topic, you are probably gonna get pinched with it, so just be wary of that. But without further ado, we will get into this. I'll start mixing up some substrate and I'll kind of, I'll do flash changes. I don't want to make this a terribly long video, but I want to keep people informed on what these need to be. Uh, the, the ideal temperature in the inside needs to be between roughly between 77 and 77 and 88 degrees. Anything past that is just a, a bit extreme. Um, and you're going to, these guys need to be moist all the time. They need to have it saturated twice a day. Um, and then obviously, you know, we talked about the heat pad. But, like I said, we'll get into it and we'll jump into this. One quick side note on these guys. Uh, I forgot to mention it. But we're gonna jump from the <laughs> normal video to uh, just a side program. Uh, when you introduce salt water, it needs to be marine land salt water. It cannot be just table salt or anything like that. Um, and that's because during, even though these guys live in the forest and the wooded areas and everything, they do come out on the beach and they do um, go all the way down to the ocean to bathe. So. But so you, like I said, you need a freshwater source, you need a saltwater source, and look, sneak preview. He's already digging out his new home. Thanks for watching guys, and stay tuned for the rest of the video. Hope you enjoyed this video guys uh, thanks for watching make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram we'll drop the links right now also with our website at www.bluedogaquatics.org uh, hope you enjoyed it leave a comment down below and uh, let us know what you think and hey guys by the way we hit a thousand subscribers so thank you for that without that uh, we wouldn't even have a channel uh, I'd just be some crazy guy sitting there and uh, Oh man, I thought I saw something like a ghost behind me or something. <laughs> but without you guys, uh, I'd just be some crazy dude sitting here making videos on husbandry and all that. If there's a video you'd like to see, make sure to drop a comment and let us know. But the big question as always, your tank or mine? <laughs>